I've got to build a rig that does a couple of different things. The first thing is that it has to hold this tank steady in such a place that we can drop a heavy weight on the valve and knock it off. The second thing is that same holder is going to guide it as it takes off so that once it gets going, it's aimed in a certain direction and it'll hit the wall at speed, we hope. Good, it looks like it fits fine. To sever the valve, he's fitting a hinged 10-foot tube to drop a 40-pound steel bar bang on the nozzle. Adams borrowed some T-sized tanks from George, so all they need now is a good, solid target. I think we got everything. All right, well, let's get out there and try and blow one of these cylinders through the wall. This military bunker is the perfect place to test what we all hope will be the world's first and most destructive land torpedo. Oh. Seems Terry and Tyler did a first-rate job. It works for me. I, I think this will do just fine. Yeah, that seems nice and solid. It's not quite as big as the side of a barn, but the question remains, can the cylinder actually hit it? So I'm thinking that when we set up the rig over by the door, we want to make sure those doors are as, as close as we can get them. OK, well, they are, in theory, rockets. So we should be careful with them. Now, careful is a word Adam sometimes has trouble hearing. Now we do the circus fake here acts, right? OK. Oh. Welcome to Cirque du Sauvage, a one-time only performance. That is the power of the mind. <laughs> now to test the power of a 2600 PSI air cylinder and see if it can shatter a solid brick wall. Ugh, I don't mind fingers on the chalkboard, but that's messed up. To help the rocket on its way, Myth Turn Jess gets to grips with the lard. Trust Jamie to always have a bucket or two on hand. It's cheap, it's smelly, and it's a great way to reduce friction. It's important to be judicious about your lard distribution, Jess. The rig is greased and ready, but will the steel bar have enough momentum to break the nozzle? This is a two by two inch solid steel bar and it weighs, I think, officially a heck of a lot. That's 40 pounds dropped from a height of 10 feet. It's a classic case of a square peg in a round hole, and that surely deserves a test run. Piece of a brick right there All right. that'll keep our, the end of our piece of steel from getting too damaged. Three, two, one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that looks pretty serious. If a 40-pound bar can do this, just imagine what a 140-pound gas tank could do. If all goes to plan, it's looking curtains for our wall. All right, I'm arming the rig. Arming the rig means unscrewing the protective cap. All that remains is to pull the string that releases the weight. That hopefully guillotines the valve. All right, ladies and germs, shearing the compressed air cylinder in three, two, one. This is close to a worst case scenario. As feared, the valve was only partially sheared, so the cylinder went absolutely nowhere. I'm gonna wait however long it takes for it to let go of its air, because it's got a damaged valve, and that valve could give any minute and, you know, become a bullet. It's a very slow leak, so the boys have 45 minutes to stand well back and revise their plans. Adam and Jamie are trying to figure out what went wrong with their first attempt to blast an air cylinder through a brick wall. I can still see it. Yeah, it hasn't moved. In best Mythbusters tradition, they decide to tinker with just about everything. An extra 30 pounds of lead is shaved down for the trigger. Pencil rods are added to help guide the weight and never underestimate the benefits of extra lard. Insert joke here. So this second time around, we've added more weight. We've lubricated the whole weight system so that it'll be 
more slippery when it goes down. And then probably most importantly of all, we've uh, moved the valve placement slightly so that the weight when it hits it will hit right on the very tip of the valve. And that'll provide the most leverage and hopefully snap it more readily. Calm, steady words from a man who's hoping to launch a gas cylinder into the next county. Here we go, shearing the regulator off the tank. Attempt number two in five, four, cross your fingers, three, two, one. <laughs> that is a lovely, lovely sound. The valve has sheared clean off, and that's a very good sign. It looks like the cylinder flew straight and true, but did it have enough thrust to crack the wall? <laughs> the lard that did it. <laughs> At 40 miles per hour, the air tank turned the cinder block to cinders. It even put a fair dent in the wall six feet behind it. It totally, no way. I mean, it didn't go all the way through, but it, uh, it went through this one and it was going, it's working its way through that one. I, I, was ready to, I was ready to see this as not possible. I was totally expecting it not to actually work because it's one of those apocryphal tales and everyone we talked to had heard the story but no one knew anybody that it happened to. You know, this was an optimum situation for this tank. Uh, what this tank did is as good as it gets. My favorite thing is just the perfect roundness of the top of this hole. It also pushed this entire wall back a half an inch. Although the cylinder was deliberately aimed, you couldn't ask for a more convincing result. So let's call this myth totally and spectacularly confirmed.